Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna alhamda lillah. Certainly, all praise, gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahmaduhu, for that reason we praise him. Manasta'inuhu, we ask for help. We ask for assistance. وَنَتَوَكَلَ عَلَيْهِ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ اللَّهُ إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Allah says in his book, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ the way he deserves it. Don't you die. Don't you dare die that you are not in full state of submission. That you are not a Muslim. Okay. Last night, I was at a program where our uh, dear beloved teacher, Shah, uh, Yahya Rudas, was with us. And he said something that really struck with me. I was asked last night, can I do this khutbah? I'm like, okay, so I got only a few hours to prepare. It's not easy to prepare for a khutbah in a few hours. And also, I was listening to his khutbah this afternoon at 1.30, and he reiterated something, which is, um, which is what I'm going to talk about. Um, simply, simple example for you. He said, at this khutbah today, he said, our way out is to be attached to the Qur'an. Qur'an is our way out, so think about that. Our way out is Qur'an. Uh, we'll talk about that, what that means. And also last night he said something really interesting. He said, all the atrocities that we feel that is upon humanity, upon Muslims or humanity, is our own doing. We need to take account, we need to take responsibility for what we do because that's a direct result of it. Collectively, so understand something, I wanna clarify. Islam doesn't collectively punish because of, because of the actions of one, that's not what it is. Collectively, all of us. Which brings me to this area that I'm about to discuss. I've talked about this many times in khutbahs and outside of khutbah, but it's, it's gonna serve us as a quick reminder again, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Allah says the following in uh, Surah Al-Hadid. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ We should do, we should do a, a lesson, a Friday night lesson on this Surah Al-Hadid beginning until you get to this ayah. Oh, it's phenomenal. It's, it doesn't, you don't get the juices if I just translate this ayah for you if you don't understand all the ayah prior to this one. It's amazing. We should do that a Friday night gathering or something. But here's what Allah says. Not knowing the background, not knowing all the other things, I'm just trying to do my best. Allah says, أَلَمْ يَعْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَى قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Allah's complaining, saying, isn't it time? Isn't it time? Hasn't it time passed for all of you? For all of you to have your heart in a state of humbleness. For what? لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ what is the dhikrullah, which is really puzzling to me, for the remembrance of Allah. Allah doesn't even say for the Qur'an, for the revelation, for what you have at your hand. It doesn't say that. Why? It makes you feel like you have forgotten even the name of Qur'an. So Allah says, لِذِكْرِلَّهِ Isn't it time that you humble yourself, that you understand it, that you ponder it, that you think about it? But like Shaykh Yahya Roda said, it is the way out for you, for the challenges that you face, the challenges that you see on a daily basis. And then Allah goes on and says, وَلَا تَكُنُكَ الَّذِينَ And don't become like those. Allah gives you an example. So in the Quran, there are examples. What do you think the point of an example is? Example from history. If you and I are not learning from history, what is the point of history? I'm from Afghanistan. So somebody way back when asked me, um, 
What do you think about U.S.'s involvement in Afghanistan? My response was very simple. I said, well, when do you think U.S. learned something from history? If you don't learn something from history, you keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again. Allah is giving you this in the Quran, these lessons for you and I to ponder, to take a lesson from. Allah says, don't become like those. They were studying just like you. They were the chosen people. They had revelation. They had prophets. They had everything for them. And guess what they did? They became lazy with it. They became comfortable with it. They didn't even think about it. They took it for ritualistic aspects only. They didn't take as if this is your life belongs to this. Your survival depends on this. They did not take it like that. That's how you look at our state. Be, be honest. Look at our state. This is exactly what it is. We are very comfortable with what we do. We take this revelation, this book, all those beautiful things, as ritualistic things. Let me tell you something that I was pondering with the current situation. Let me give you an example. It's not part of the thing, but I'm going to make it quick. Those of you who follow basketball, football, any sports, any um, group sports, team sports, how do you think the coach wins against the other team, against the opponent? What do you think the coach does or the team do? They study the opponent constantly. They watch the videos. They look, they look at every single thing they have published, every single thing they do. They look at it. They study it so hard so that they will beat them at their own game. Quran has exactly that for you and I. Exactly that outlined. That you want to win? Here's the history. Here's what people before you did. Here's what people before you did. Here's what those who had strategized, those who were oppressors, those who are uh, genocidal, whatever they are, this is their strategy. You got to learn that, how to tackle that. Cannot be reactive. Allah says, وَلَا يَكُونَكَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلَ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمْ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ those who receive this incredible gift. Now you and I have received this incredible gift, the last one. They became just lazy with it. They're just like, well, you know, it's all good. I'll carry my life the way I want to. When I reach a fork, I'll think about it. And what is comfortable, I'll pick that. Not what has been guided for me to do, because that will go, that will contradict to what I need to do, to my success, to my finances, to my political uh, aspiration, to whatever that thing is, will take the, take the other route and be comfortable with it. That's what it is. Guess what happens? فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their heart, heart, becomes hard. Now, some of you might think, or some of those who are uh, attacking us, our faith say, what do you mean your heart becomes hard? When I take that heart and do a um, biopsy, whatever it is, do the um, test, it's the same, same flush, same soft flush. Doesn't matter as a believer or non-believer. That's not what Allah is talking about. There's a light in the heart that has been diminished. If that light is diminished, that light, this light that we are reading, the Quran, the revelation is not going to penetrate. When it's not going to penetrate, what do you think is going to happen? We become just relaxed. Things will have no impact on us. Allah is warning you and I in Surah Al-Hadid saying, don't become like those people. They had this incredible gift, the survival tool, but they did whatever they did. For you and I to be successful in anything that we do, for Muslims, for humanity, 
That's the only option. The other option gives you temporarily success. We need to decide, is that what we want? Allah gives you a way out. I'lamu, the next ayah. Inna Allah, anna Allah yahlil arda ba'da mawtha qad bayyana lakum al-ayati la'allakum ta'qilun. It's not too late, Allah says. It's not too late. It's not too late. For the heart that is just flickering, it's not completely dead, you've got to reach to this. You've got to understand the strategies. Got to get a lesson. Let me sit for a few seconds. Make dua. Please make dua. Just take this moment. In Alhamdulillah, the Salat was Salam ala Rasulillah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of, the thing, one of the things that we have at our hands is du'a, right? Supplication, asking Allah. Ask Allah for sincerity. But do your work. Do your part. Do your job. Get close to this. It's a monumental task. It is not a simple thing. We could be discouraged. Tackling Quran is not a simple thing. But you've got to be in the company of those who know it. Be attached with them. Learn from them. Create your own groups. It's the only way you can do it. This is a lifelong journey. It is not something that you can do it in one semester in a college or a few uh, Friday night halaqas. You think you got it. That's not how it works. Get close to this. Allah says in his book, Inna allaha wa malaik lahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayuhu alladheena amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka hamid majid اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعفو عنا واغفل لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين Secret to success, Allah says elsewhere in the Quran, one of the places, in Allah ya'muru bil adi wal ihsani wa ita idil qurba. Secret to success is Surah Al-Nahl, 16, ayah number 90. This is what I'm reciting to you. There are three things Allah says immediately that will bring you the success that you need. What are those three things? In Allah ya'muru bil adi wal ihsani wa ita idil qurba. Those are the three things. And some of you sitting there is like, uh, what does that mean? Ah, that means you need to go to six, chapter 16, number 90, and look at it and read it. And Allah says, the things that will destroy your success are the other three things. Those are the three things that's going to kill your success. Or what does that mean? That means 1690. That's what you're going to go after Jama and look at it and read it and contemplate and think about it. And if you have questions, ask someone who knows. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْيَ عَيْذَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ